Known as the miracle plant, aloe vera has a tremendous history of healing over the centuries and it's still a popular form of healing. Today the gel from the plants is used in a wide range of conditions and it's also a key ingredient in gels and lotions made to nourish the skin. Joining me here is Dr. Peter Atherton and Bob Parker, the managing director of Forever Living Products, who are the world's largest supplier of aloe vera products. They're here to talk about the merits of using the medicinal herb in particular, its health benefits. Bob, tell us about your company, Forever Living. Certainly, Martin. Well, our company was f founded 32 years ago, just gone in May, uh, by a gentleman called Rex Morn, who is uh, still our chairman today, accompanied by his son, Greg. Uh, they've built an organization now that spans 147 countries uh, around the world, and we're by far the largest producer of uh, aloe vera-based products. The way that we market our products is exclusively through uh, independent, predominantly home-based distributors. And from our small, humble beginnings, those 32 years ago in uh, Phoenix, Arizona, which is still our home, hometown today, we now have over 9.5 million distributors involved with us across those countries. And uh, Each year we open up in at least one or two new countries, providing the occupants of those countries with an opportunity to build their own home-based business, enjoying the uh, great benefits that we're going to hear about of uh, aloe vera and also being able to share those benefits with uh, friends and family and people in their local community at the same time creating an income for themselves. And presumably your chairman is still your chairman after 32 years because he uses your own product. Absolutely. I mean, he just has an amazing energy. He travels the world three weeks out of four, and uh, it's his passion to see our opportunity and our product available in every single country around the world. That's his mission. Peter, why is aloe such an important plant? What is really special about it? Well, I think it's been considered to be a very important plant for... Um, thousands of years in fact and recognized as such by many different cultures including uh, the ancient Greeks and Romans the Egyptians the Indians the Chinese and as far back as that oh yes this is and it's well documented uh, there's a particular piece of evidence it's called the Abus papyrus that was excavated in Thebes in 1858 uh, by the uh, e Egyptologist George Abus and was shown to date from the reign of the pharaoh Amenhotep, who reigned in about 1552 BC. But this papyrus actually showed that aloe was being used in the previous 2,000 years. And it mentioned at least 12 formulations of aloe vera. And are they similar to the formulations that we have today? Was it being uh, used I, in the same way in those in, days? In similar it? ways, but I think we use it in a slightly more sophisticated way. Um, because of its popularity, you mentioned it was called the miracle plant, but it has actually loads of other nicknames. The medicine plant, the silent healer. Uh, the Apache Indians call it the dietary plant because they know it to be a food. Um, but my favorite actually is a Japanese nickname called Isa Irazu, which translated, I'm told, means no need for a doctor. So <laughs> you just, just take other. You'll be redundant. I will. <laughs> You mentioned there another type of aloe. So there are different types of aloe. What makes this one special? Well, there are about, and I don't think anybody really knows, maybe 200 species of aloes in the world. And over the years, about five, maybe six, have been shown to have medicinal properties. That's all? That's all. And aloe vera is called aloe vera because it's the true aloe. To give it its proper name, it's Aloe Barbadensis Miller and is considered to be the most potent and that's why Forever Living uses exclusively only Aloe Barbadensis. And why do you recommend using it as a supplement on a daily basis? Well, um, two main reasons really. One is Aloe Vera is a superb general tonic. In it are about 30 different minerals, vitamins, and trace elements that I believe are now missing often from our food today because we're just not eating fresh food as we used to. So you don't have to be ill to take aloe vera. It's just a general health tonic um, supplying those deficiencies and thereby enabling your enzyme systems to work better. It has certain specific advantages in that it contains 
uh, painkillers and anti-inflammatory components. So if people are suffering from painful conditions, and especially those that are inflammatory based like arthritis, will benefit from aloe. Um, it has also a long chain sugar or polysaccharide which is known to affect the immune system. Um, it's what's called an immunomodulator or immune balancer. So people suffering with disorders of the immune system, two examples being psoriasis and ulcerative colitis, often get benefit as well. It has an effect on the bowel. It sort of regulates the passage of food through the bowel. It smooths out the contraction and relaxation of the bowel muscle. So um, it often helps people, for example, with irritable bowel syndrome. Um, it's known to improve food absorption, particularly protein, and also to balance gut flora. So, for example, if you had a, an overdose of yeast or candida in your gut, it tends to sort of reduce that a bit. I wouldn't say it will eradicate it, but it, it balances it out. It seems incredible that one product could do all of those things. What's the magic ingredient? Well, I don't believe there is a magic ingredient, but people might say if there were one, it would be that polysaccharide, that long chain sugar, because in the States, they've actually extracted that and made it into a drug. Carrington Laboratories have produced a drug called Kerosene, for which the FDA have licensed it for use in cat leukemia, feline leukemia. Cat leukemia is caused by a type of virus called a retrovirus, which is the same family of viruses that causes AIDS. So they have uh, used this drug um, in the treatment of AIDS victims. And what they found is it's not successful on its own, but it is synergistic with the standard AIDS treatment. It enhances the standard AIDS treatment. But I believe you don't have to extract the magic bullet. It, it works just as well if you drink the gel. And is there any recent clinical evidence to actually prove the health benefits? I would say yes, but not enough, um, because it's very costly to set up clinical trials. But we have done one uh, important clinical trial, sponsored by Forever, um, in the use of aloe vera gel in ulcerative colitis, which is an immune disorder. It was done at the Royal London Hospital, not far from here, and it showed categorically that there was an improvement and there was an improvement at cellular level. You could look at the bowel cells under the microscope after being subjected to aloe and see a difference. So it's not magic or myth, there is real medicine here, real medicine. Right, and can you then extrapolate from that? Can you take the difference that that made to the cells and say that because it did it there, it is going to do it in the other areas that you were talking about. I mean, one could say that probably theoretically, but unfortunately I don't have the hard evidence to back that up. I would love to see many more clinical trials, and we as a company are about to set up another, but that's in the treatment of osteoarthritis, and that should be starting in a week or two, involving over 200 patients. So we're very keen to present aloe with an evidence base. And presumably there are thousands of people out there, hundreds of thousands of people who actually believe that it works for them. Oh yes, yes. We have a, 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 a huge amount of anecdotal evidence. And I always say to people, if they're skeptical, well just try it. See if it works for you. I think it's fair to say that many people get involved with the Forever organization having firstly been customers and they become a walking advert for the product because of the benefits that they've received and that's very typical of how many people, not all people, but many people get involved with us. Why do you recommend that people use Forever Living's Allo products rather than any other Allo product? I mean, you've got competitors out there, presumably. What, what makes Forever Living's Allo product so special? One of the benefits we have, of course, is being the world's largest Allo producer. Um, we put much more aloe into most of our products than any other of our competition. Um, we're also what's called a vertically integrated company, so we own and control every stage of the production, right from the growing of the plants through the harvesting, the filleting. We have a global stabilization process that's unique to our product, which retains all the natural benefits that an aloe plant has. And so when you drink our aloe or use our aloe, it's the equivalent of being able to, if possible, 
walk into our gardens here in England and harvest a raw aloe plant and take it in its best form, which is, of course, naturally. Aloe vera is something I've always associated with suntan creams. How do you make the leap from that to something you can drink? I, I think you're like most people. They do associate aloe with topical products, especially uh, suntan creams. And believe it or not, one of the most popular nicknames for aloe vera is the burn plant because it has been used for centuries to heal burns of all types. Um, it has a natural soothing and moisturizing effect, so it's widely used in the cosmetic industry. Um, also, topically, it's used to put in wounds to heal. Um, but, but, but drinking? Yes, well, the drink actually promotes the healing by providing the nutrients that are required um, to produce new cells. Um, it's certainly not sold on its taste, it's sold on its benefit. Um, perhaps you ought to try it yourself. How about giving him a drink? Give me a whirl. It looks a bit like grapefruit juice. Yes. It yeah. should be drunk first thing in the morning before your cup of tea even because what you're trying to do is to get it through your empty stomach into the small bowel where it is uninfluenced by stomach acids and enzymes and can be absorbed very quickly. Interesting. It slightly, is. slightly bitter. Yes. Yes. Um, I could get used to it, mm. but it might not instinctively be something I would want yes. to drink. So, is it mixed with any other ingredients? You can mix it with cordial or orange juice or whatever you like, and it's best drunk cold, straight from the fridge, and well shaken, because you can see there are lots of sort of bits and pieces in there. So I'm going to walk out of here a lot healthier, am I? Like a new man. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs>